I actually want to begin by talking a little bit about identity and about your relationship with yourself. To the degree that you are really in touch with your own personal power, you've done a lot of healing work, you know who you are, you like yourself, you trust yourself, you have worked with your internal GPS and you trust how you perceive things. You've healed the trauma that often distorts our perceptions. You've done a lot of healing work um, about how you've been trained to perceive and interpret things and you've sort of reclaimed parts of yourself. You don't have a lot of shadow selves and by shadow selves, I mean the parts that we feel like we have to suppress and contain because we think they're bad. You don't have a lot of like bad parts that you're trying to hide from the world to the degree that you've worked on this, this like identity work. You are not going to feel that afraid of a much wider range of situations because your level of self-trust and self-connection will mitigate your fear responses. Does that make sense? Part of where our fear comes from is in not believing that we know or that we will be able to field what somebody else is sending our way. And we feel insecure and we're not sure we can handle it and we're taking it personally. And we, we feel injured, right? Because we're taking things very personally. So anytime that I am in fear or rage or suppression, I want to ask myself how much of this is only in the present moment and how much of this is activating echoes from my history? How much of this is a pattern that I keep getting stuck in? How much of this is a recurring theme that is actually, you know, like the way I think about it is it's kind of like curriculum for my own personal growth. It gives me like, um, you know, my objectives for the, the next six months, you know, what is my personal growth curriculum and the places where I'm triggered and the places where I lose access to my freedom, to my choicefulness, to my loving self, to my wisdom. Those are the places where I know I have healing work and empowerment work to do. So that's how you want to think about it is something needs to be reclaimed, healed, integrated, and all that's work has been done. And now it's about capacity building. It's actually building empowerment muscles. And if we're doing it in a nonviolent way, which is the way that I am a huge fan of, it's the muscles of power with in every situation. Okay. I'm going to give you a metaphor for a moment. It's a little bit like surfing. When we begin surfing, we want little baby waves because otherwise the huge waves can literally kill us right? There are waves out there that if we are not good at surfing, we have a lot of fear around them. And that fear is a form of wisdom. Because our assessment of what this wave is bringing and my current skill level leads me to a very quick calculation that interacting with this wave is going to be harmful to me. Because I don't have the capacity to surf it yet. That doesn't make the wave bad. Okay, that's a, a really important point. We don't create an enemy image of the wave. We don't call the wave abusive. We recognize in the relational frame between me and this particular wave, it is beyond my capacity. If I want to surf that wave, I need practice staying balanced and skillful on a surfboard. And I need to practice with waves that are at my level of stretch zone. And human relationships are exactly the same. There are going to be people and dynamics and ways of being that represent for you a huge wave. Your system goes into panic. You move into fight, flight, freeze. You get rageful, you lose ground because the dynamics coming there is bringing up way too much stuff for you. And so the wise thing to do when you're faced with a huge wave is to disengage. You don't dive in, you know, in a self-sabotaging, self-harming way into an ocean that can literally kill you. But if you're on a self-development, human potential, growth, learning, I want to be a freer, stronger, you know, more whatever it is for you, human, then you get on your surfboard and you practice. And you go practice, you figure out, okay, 
I take things super personally. That's mine to work on. If I want more internal freedom, I, I want to learn how to not take it personally and also not lose connection with others. Because sometimes when people get in the early stages of not taking something personally, they're like, that's you, not me. That's you, not me. It's, I'm not taking that on. You know? And it's, very, it's a very defensive initial and it loses connection with the other person. It becomes sort of dismissive and devaluing of the other person. And that's fine. That's a good stage to get to, but you want to get to the, the end goal, which is I can stay connected and caring about your feelings, your needs, your subjective reality, what's going on for you without losing connection to mine. And I can start navigating this relational frame with a lot of consciousness and a lot of choicefulness and a lot of empowerment and a lot of love. So that's the end goal here. That's what we're looking for, the, the frame we're trying to get into. And then I want to remind you, there are many, many people in your life where you already do that. How many of you have taken, should I stay or should I go? It's a free course that I have. And I, I happen to just have one of the handouts. And in this handout, I talk about like, uh, this is from that course. You can just download these. But there's a green zone, an orange zone, and a red zone, right? So this red zone here is like the relationships and situations where you get super triggered and super afraid. And you know what, Sharice, you're talking about rage and suppression, and that's red zone relationships, right? Or so much fear that I'm immobilized. The orange zone relationships are the places where you're practicing. There's a stretch. I can't stay as conscious and as skillful as I want, but it's not harmful to me to be engaging. It's difficult, it's awkward, it's a grapple, but it's not harmful to me. And then green zone, right, is when we get to the people uh, where it's really easy. It's really easy for us to just sort of stay in charge of ourselves and not get super triggered. Okay. All right, so that's just a little bit of orienting and because sometimes we, it, it's helpful for me to just have a framework because you're going to have places where you have capacity and places where you don't. Now, your fear reaction, when you have a fear reaction, it tells you that you're perceiving the challenges of the situation to be bigger than what you think you have the capacity for. And the best way to get out of a fear reaction is to find out what you're scared of and where you may need to develop courage. And you want to, this is what I often ask people to do is get deeply in touch with your values. Get deeply in touch with your values. And we just spent a lot of time in January in the membership thinking about like, what are your values? Because you will have a lot of courage and a lot of willingness to be uncomfortable for the things that you value. And there's wisdom in knowing what it is that you're valuing and what you're willing to be uncomfortable for. And one of the places where we can get a little stuck is when we've taken on other people's values and we're trying to live in somebody else's value system. It's very hard to have courage when you're living in somebody else's value system. And that work is about sort of reconnecting with yourself and finding out what your values are. Because when you're grounded in that, it's much easier to work with what you're afraid of. You can discern more easily whether I'm whether the wisdom of the fear is this is a wave that is too big for me and it's too harmful for me. So for example, there are people in my life that when they get angry with me, I move into like three-year-old little girl and all I wanna do is like make them feel better so that I can be safe. There are other people in my life who can be angry with me in exactly the same way. And I don't have any of that coming up anymore. I can actually just stay in my adult self and stay pretty grounded. Rage is a form, is a fight response. Fight responses are really healthy. Fight responses mean that the part of you that gives a shit about yourself and is going to bat for yourself and is willing to advocate for yourself and is willing to stand for something for you is online. And we want that online. We absolutely want our fight response online. And if you don't want to harm other people, you're going to learn how to channel that energy in a way that is co-creative and collaborative, not destructive and punitive. And destructive and punitive is what our culture, what a domination culture teaches you to do with your anger, is to become self-entitled, self-righteous, grandiose, and violent. And to harm other people with the unconscious consciousness, if you can get your head around that, the unconscious consciousness, 
that they deserve to feel bad because it's for their own good, because they should be punished, because that's the best way to get people to grow and learn. That's some of the, the assumptions underneath domination consciousness. And it is self-sabotaging and it doesn't work.